Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Today I'm going to give you a quick and pretty popular exercise that can help shake up your playing of arpeggios within a key. As always, the lesson material is there over at the Talking Bass website, so just click on the link in the info below to get on over there if you want to work through the sheet music in your own time. So what do I mean by the arpeggios within a key? Well, in any key, or scale for that matter, we can build arpeggios from each note, or scale degree. As I've mentioned so many times on this channel, an arpeggio is a chord played one note at a time. And the basic chords like triads or seventh chords are built by stacking thirds. Okay? Now, I won't waste you know, time working through the construction of every triad in this lesson. Instead, I'll link to other lessons that I have here on the channel. For this lesson, you simply need to know the major, minor, and diminished triads. So it's a very, very quick refresher. On a root note of C, I'm taking here at the third fret of the A string, the C major triad is C, E, G, root, major third, perfect fifth. C minor is C, E flat, G, root, minor third, perfect fifth, and for the diminished triad, we have C, E flat, and G flat, root, minor third, and diminished fifth. So you just need to know those three triads. In building arpeggios within a scale, because they're built from these stacked thirds, it's easy to think of them with a simple method of play a note, miss a note, play a note, miss a note, play a note, okay? So let's take the C major scale here at the eighth fret of the E string as an example. So we have the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so I'm guessing most of you know a C major scale. So to build a triad arpeggio on the first degree of that scale, I play the C, then miss the D, play the E, miss the F, play the G. C, E, G. And that's our first triad, that's chord number one. Okay, so we've built a triad using those stacked thirds on the first degree of the C major scale, which is a C. And if any of you know your triads well, you'll recognize that shape there, C, E, G, that's a C major triad. So chord number one in C major is C major. Next, we can move to the second degree of the C major scale, which is D. So we do the same thing again. So we, again, we're in the C major scale. That same set of notes, that same palette, and we start on the D. So we play the note, miss the E, play the F, miss the G, play the A. So we have D, F, and A, okay? And that's our chord number two. We're building a triad on the second degree of the major scale. And again, if you know your triads well enough, D, F, A, that's a D minor triad. So chord number two in C major is D minor. If we repeat this process on each degree of the C major scale, we get the following chords. We have chord one is C major, chord two is D minor, chord three is E minor, chord four is F major, chord five is G major, chord six is A minor, and chord seven is B diminished. A quick and easy way of remembering these chords is to just think of one, four, and five as major. Okay, they're the primary chords. The rest are minor, so two, three, and six, and then we have the odd one out, which is chord seven, which is diminished. But if you know that one, four, and five are uh, a major, it's a lot easier to work on them. So I'll just play through those chords in C minor so you can hear how they sound. So chord one, C major, chord two, D minor, chord three, E minor, chord four, F major, chord five, G major, chord six, A minor, chord seven, B diminished, and then finally to chord C. So you can hear us working through the scale there. Okay. So this is what we're talking about when we mention chords by number in a key. You'll have seen chord progressions like a two, five, one, a one, four, five, all of that stuff, like you get with the Nashville number system. Uh, and you'll also see it in classical analysis, you know, when you see Roman numerals. That's all to do with this, with the chords in a key. So if we have a one, six, two, five progression in C major, the chords are going to be one, C major, chord six, A minor, chord two, D minor, chord five, G major, and back to chord one, C major, okay? That's a one, six, two, five progression in C major. We can also shift that sequence of chords to any key. So one will always be major, two will always be minor, three will always be minor, etc. So if we take that one, six, two, five progression and play it in F major, well, we're gonna have chord one, F major, then chord six is gonna be D 
D minor, chord two, G minor, and chord three, uh, five, C major. Okay, that's one, six, two, five in F major. We can apply the same method of creating triads to seventh chords and any other chords by just adding notes from that major scale palette. We can also apply that same method to any scale. So the natural minor scale would give us a diatonic set of chords for the minor key. We could also create arpeggios in modes like the Dorian, Mixolydian, Phrygian modes. Um, any scale can act as a palette for creating these chords. Now, bear in mind, and this is important to know, these diatonic chords in a key aren't the only chords that you'll use in creating a piece of music. I see questions from people all the time asking why we might have an A7 in the key of C major, or an F7 in the key of F like in a blues. The diatonic chords that we've created in this lesson are just that, they're the plain diatonic set, you know, they're the ones that are in key. Beyond that basic elementary foundation, you can add chromatic notes and chromatic chords into the mix. And it's actually rare to see a piece that sticks rigidly to the diatonic notes and chords through the whole thing. So don't learn these chords in a major key and think, okay, you know, that's it, I understand how all chord progressions work in a major key. As soon as you analyze even the most simple of songs, you're likely to find chords outside of that set because of these little chromatic notes. Okay, so on to the exercise. So what we're going to do first is just play through the arpeggios in C major in a single position, starting at the eighth fret of the E string. So obviously you could play through these arpeggios, you know, working up the neck with the, you know, the standard patterns that you might know. So C major, D minor, you know, you know, working up like that. But we're gonna play them in one area and this is gonna force you into actually seeing these arpeggio patterns from different fingers. So, let's work through those. So we first of all have C major, starting at that eighth fret, so C major triad, C, E, G. Then we're gonna play D minor, and we're gonna be starting that with the fourth finger there. So we've got D, F, A, so that's our chord two. Then we're gonna have E minor, E, G, B. So I'm starting that one with the first finger there at the seventh fret of the A string. Then we've got F major, so I'm starting at the 8th fret of the A string there with the standard major arpeggio. Then we've got G major, starting at the 10th fret of the A string, starting with the 4th finger. And then we're on to A minor, which I'm going to start here on the D string, so this is going to be at the 7th fret there. There's the A minor. Then I'm going to move up one for the uh, B diminished. Okay, so that's starting at the 9th fret of the D string. And finally, we can finish with the C major up there at the 10th fret of the D string. So I've provided the sheet music there on screen and you can see that over at the website if you want to work through this in your own time. But once you get up to the top there, you can come back down. So C major, B diminished, A minor, G major, F major, E minor, D minor, and back to C. Which gives us a complete exercise of... So, like I said, this can shake up your perspective on arpeggios because you're having to learn them and play them from different fingers, all within that one position. So, next let's mix things up a little. This time we're going to play those arpeggios again, but this time we're going to play each one in descent from the fifth, okay? So we're not starting on the root note this time. So, if we start with the C major, which would be C, E, G normally, we're going to come down G, E, C, okay? So, let's work up through them. C major. Then D minor, then E minor, F major, G major, A minor, then B diminished, and C major. Okay, so. So as you can see, this exercise becomes a lot more tricky because instead of just working up with the kind of finger pattern, you know, that you can with the, you know, working up through the scale like that, you're actually having to think of each individual arpeggio and think about the fifth, okay? So there's a lot more mental processes going on. So once you get to the top, you can come back down again, B diminished, A minor, and then down to G major, F major, E minor, D minor, C major, okay? So. And 
point, I would advise you to take this as slow as you have to to get it right. Don't just try blasting through it full speed, you know. So if you have to start off with, you know, that C major there, and then D minor, and then really think about it and think, okay, which one is it? E minor, you know, just take your time with it, working them out as you go. Now let's make things even harder. So this time we're going to work up an arpeggio and then down the next. So again, we work up C major and then down, D minor. So when you get up through that C major, C, E, G, we then move to the A there, at the seventh fret of the D string, to come down through D minor, okay? So each one of these turns into a kind of little hill move, you know, up and then down, okay? So I'd advise you to work through these, you know, adding one each, uh, each time. So you work up, just get used to that move to begin with. Then we move up to E minor, and then F major. Then put them together. Okay, then up to G major. Then, okay, so we've got that G, and then the A minor, and then up the B diminished. Okay, and then down C major. So. When we get to the top, we can come back down again, again using the same ascending and then descending line. So we're going to have C major, and then we're going to come down on B diminished. Up the A minor, down the G major, up the F major, down the E minor, up the D minor, and then down the G major. Okay, so... Finally, we can just try the reverse of that. So we start with the descending arpeggio on the C major and then ascend on the D minor, so. Okay, and then down on the E minor, up the F major, down the G minor, up the A minor, down the B diminished, up the C major, okay? And if we come down from the top, again, descending and then ascending, so start on the C, down, C major, up, the B, minor, uh, B diminished, down, the A minor, up, the G major, then down, the F major, up, the E minor, and then down, the uh, D minor, up, the C major, okay? So... different methods for playing through the arpeggios force you into thinking outside of that single way of seeing arpeggios as ascending shapes. You have to see the arpeggios as a whole and you get a feel for playing them in different ways. And you know, it's a bit of a finger twister at times, it really makes you think. And also, remember, you don't want to just play these in C major, in the key of C major, you want to try them in every key. So maybe try through the cycle, so try F major, B flat major, E flat major, A flat major, etc. And you can also try this in different scales. You know, so you could try a natural minor scale, which will give you a good idea of why the chords are as they are in a minor key. You can try uh, modes like the Dorian, Mixolydian, Phrygian, Lydian, whatever. You can try this in any kind of scale. Okay. Okay, so that's the exercise for today. Give me a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and remember the material is all there to see over at the Talking Bass website. Then, while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find over 400 other free bass lessons on just about everything, all organized for ease of navigation. Okay, I'll see you next week.